Hello everyone, today we're going to learn how to add sorting, search, and also customize our uh, resource tables a little bit more. So let's get started. First thing I want to show you guys is how to add sorting and searching. It's very easy to do in filament. So let's go ahead over to our code. And here I have our post resource from the previous episode. So it's the resource for this page. And in order to customize the table, you need to find the table function. So scroll down. You'll see the form. I'm going to close the form and then under the table function, there is going to be a table inside the columns. This is obviously where we defined all of our columns. So in order to make a column sortable, all you have to do is call a method on it, sortable. And in order to make it a bit easier, I'm going to put those to a new line. And then in order, if you want to make it searchable, you can go ahead and add a searchable to it. Now for the thumbnail, I don't think it needs to be sortable. So not a good candidate. Let's do it for the title. And also let's make it searchable. Okay, so this will make basically so you can sort and search this column. Let's go back. Let's do a quick reload. And now you can see we got a nice looking search bar. And then there is a sort icon next to my title. And as you can see, if I click on it, it sorts it ascending or descending. Very easy. And if I want to search, I can say, let's say H22. We also are able to search. And it will also retain the search on the uh, on the URL. So if I, you pass the link to someone else, they open it up, they get the exact same results. Very cool. So let's go ahead and add that to, let's say, slug as well. And maybe category name as well. Let's do reload. And now we can sort by our category as well. So it works on relationships as well. Very nice. And again, if I search for PHP, it only searches and finds the category with the name PHP. So very easy to add search and sorting. Now, one more thing you can do, guys, is you can also change the label of a column. So let me give you an example. I would like to, for example, on this app show the time the post was uploaded, right? Or it was posted. So for in this case, we're using the created ad timestamp. Now, if I just go ahead and show the created ad, first of all, it looks very ugly. I don't I don't want to show created ad. I want to say maybe published ad or posted ad, something, something else. So how can you do that? You can pass in a method or call a method called label and it will allow you to customize the label shown here. So instead of created ad, I can say maybe uh, published on, something like this, okay? If I reload now, you have the ability to change this. Now, one more thing, if you're working with dates, uh, you can use a text input and then go ahead and call a method of date on it. It will convert it to a date. So it looks a bit nice, but it also gives you option to customize or format it. So if I hover over this date, you can see VS Code is showing me you can update the format and the time zone if you like. So let's say I want to use, uh, I don't know, something like this. Okay. You can go ahead and customize the format as well. Now the default format I think is okay for most applications, but sometimes you can go ahead and customize that if you need. So let's go ahead and also make this one uh, sortable and searchable. Although later on we will, I will show you guys on later episode how to add filters for dates so you can have a drop down do all those things. But for now, let's just make a super simple search. Okay, and we can all now also sort by published. Okay, so one more thing you can do, guys, is let's say you have a very big table, let's say you have 15 columns. And out of those 15, let's say 12 of them are important for the admin. Now, if you show all of them on the same page, it's going to be kind of information overload, it's going to be hard to see what is going on. Probably the admin has to scroll left and right a lot. One thing you can do is you can make them toggleable. So let me show you what that means in a second. So let's see, you can go ahead and pick any of your columns, let's say the created ad, and you can add a method of toggleable to it or chain call it. And this will make it so this column can be toggled on or off or its visibility can be toggled on and off. So I'm going to reload. And you can see now there is a new icon at the right side, if I click on it, and we get columns. And so if I uncheck this, it will basically hide publish that. If I add it, it will show it. So you can make it on large tables. So these are uh, toggleable. So let's go ahead and add this toggleable to basically everything. Why not? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just like this. And if we do a reload, now everything can be toggled, which is very nice, right? So maybe an admin doesn't really care about the thumbnail for some reason. They can toggle it off. They don't care about the colors. They can do that and they can get a you know cleaner look. And the good thing about this is actually, this is kind of persisted or is stored across multiple sessions. So if I reload, it's still gonna show me the exact same thing. So which is very nice. So 
uh, filament is actually storing it the, the profile for that specific admin when you're using when they are on their current session which is very nice okay so if i go back and come back to the same page it's still showing me you know my settings which is very nice now one thing you can do is you can customize the default behavior so for example let's say i want to also show the id okay so right now we're not showing the id of this post right well maybe you do want to show it but by default you want it to be hidden right how can you do that so you can go on this toggleable and if I hover over it, guys, there is a condition which you can pass in a closure for, uh, you know, dynamically defining if it's toggleable or not. But the second argument is going to be, is toggleable hidden by default? So we can go ahead and pass that in. Is uh, toggleable hidden by default? And I'm going to say true. So by default, it's going to be hidden. But if someone wants to show it, they can, you know, show it. So let's go ahead and do a reload. We don't see the ID, okay? So the default is hidden. But if I go over here... I can toggle it on and maybe I want to see it, right? So that's it. And if I reload again, it's going to store my preferences across my session, which is very nice. All right, guys, so we have covered a lot. One more thing I want to show you guys is how to actually go ahead and add a delete button here, right? Now we will have a separate kind of video about covering all these buttons. And if you scroll down, these are actually called actions, right? So you can see there is something called edit action. This is actually this button over here. So these are customizable. You can create your own. But uh, one use case you may have for simple applications is may, you may want to be able to delete these rows on the spot. Right now, if you want to delete something, we have to select it over here, click on this bulk action, then click on delete selected. Or uh, we will have to go on edit and then delete it. It's a bit, you know, unnecessary steps. So one thing you can do is filament ships in with some pre-built actions and we can actually check this it if we go on the source code over here so there is force delete there is a couple of them the replicate action i'm not sure if all of these work i haven't used all of them myself but i have used the delete action so one thing we can do and not all of them will work on the tables here but one thing we can do is we can go ahead and use the delete action so let's go over here and instead of edit change this to delete and this will go ahead and give us a delete button on our table. So we can just delete on the spot. So let's say I want to delete a post with ID number one. Let's click on it. It will give us a warning for confirmation. I'm going to click confirm. And boom, it just deleted it just like that. So if you would like to have a simple delete button on your uh, tables, you can go ahead and define it over here. And maybe you don't want it to be, you know, I don't know, for some reason you don't want to show the edits, you can go ahead and do that as well. Okay, of course, you can define roles and permissions and things like that. We'll cover that later on as well. But that's just I want something I wanted to cover on this video, guys. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. On the next episode, I'm going to show, cover uh, relationships. So one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships, how to handle those. It's going to be a fun one. And that's it, guys, for today's video. i see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.